Oh, don't do me like this, Mick. Somebody put me on a leash. I'm bucking wild like the AK because it came from Katra. I point it down so you can't escape her. Welcome, Hi. welcome, welcome to the club, y'all. Yeah. We're here now with your fool, Mick Jenkins. Give a round of applause, Mick Jenkins. Give a round of applause, Mick Jenkins, right now. How you doing? How you doing? I mean, the nice don't give a fuck about how niggas took it. Aqua stairs, like, what the fuck you looking at? And that's all over the world. Hey, hey, it's good to meet y'all. <laughs> Drink! More! Nah, nah, I'm starting off real subtle, you know how it is. <laughs> Dividends trickling three ways due to the penmanship. I do shows in my leisure and all these things is residual. Not only are you a really talented songwriter and rapper, Mick, the producers that you work with and have great chemistry with, they're all fucking amazing. Fuck all this censorship, man. Niggas too sensitive. If your comfort ain't pivoting, you ain't listening right. Granny praying for us. She say we ain't Christianing right. And the fact that they blend so well here in one album, and if they could do all separate albums, like you are truly blessed, my man, to have such wonderful producers to work with. Then the whole defense about it be so cold and pal. Hey guys. What's fucking cracking? I never seen some oh you motherfucker. I never seen someone eat a banana so obnoxiously. Obnoxious? Why are you hanging out in your lumbar spine like that? Hanging out. Like doesn't that hurt your back? Um, sorry, Mick Jenkins. Pieces of a man. Mick, if you're watching, you're not watching anymore. See you later. No, Mick. We're big fans of your work. <coughs> As you can see, came to your show multiple times, said what up to you. Thank you for uh, gracing Melbourne with your uh, presence once again. Mm. Put on a not good show, man. Looking forward to whatever you're about to have right here. If you don't know who Mick Jenkins is, Mick, Mick Jenkins. Mick Jenkins is. Uh, just check this out. Watch it. Just for the music, not for us. Fuck us. Yeah, fuck us, man. We're here to represent the artists. Absolutely. We just like to go about in our own manner. But if you do like what you're hearing in this video, go back to the waters. If you like that, waves. If you like that, the healing component. Honestly, the fuck. whole... Trees and truths. The whole discography is fire. The anxious. And that's, that's not often we say that. 100. You know, we, I think Mick Jenkins, this artist has made a slip in his career since... No, the beginning. He has not made a slip. He's evolved. He's kept uh, a lot of the same concepts, mm -hmm. but he's always evolved in terms of sound and the way that he goes about the concept. And it's always love. So I'm, I'm fucking hyped as fuck. My name is uh, Kermit the Piggy. <laughs> I'm Alexander Sandalis, aka Sandy Sand Kermit. That's what's up, bro. Hair on flow, featuring Julian Bell. We're here. We're doing it. We're fucking here, bro. We're here, man. He said, he said it was gonna release to me. He said it what it was called, and he was stuck to his word, man. I'm not fucking I'm around. Sorry, no fuckery. Fucking it. Sucks. That that did it. That that dash means damned if I know. What are your jazz elements? Now, Hair on Flow is a song by Cameron. Yeah. Off, down and out. Yeah, Ali Belmont um, always um, always makes references to it. These would be Cameron fans. I think it's just setting the theme, setting the tone. Yeah, it is. A little intro. Good feature. It's really suiting it quite well. So we're gonna go straight into the next one by the looks of it. What's the next track? It is. Featuring Mikhail Anthony, Stress Fracture. That's super smooth, man. That's super beautiful, man. Just vibe. Already we're getting like big jazz influences on here from the from the pitter patter of the drums. The, the keys were quite heavy compared to the bass and the brass, which were very, very light in the background. Uh, Mick's not trying to 
get too crazy on this he's track. He's not doing too much, man. Exactly. He's really letting the 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 beat and also the feature really just sort of create a lot of the melody of this track, and he's just sort of just lacing it with it's, elements. And like, it's more about the energy and the mm. feel rather than the in-your-face lyrics. So I feel like... Yeah, exactly. I feel, cause I feel like a lot of the past Mick Jenkins we've got have been very hard-hitting lyrics. Absolutely. Whereas here, it's the lyrics are still there. It's just... It's just more letting, subtle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, really fuck with that. Beautiful features. And it reminds me of all... Like, do you remember the track Slumber from uh, Waves? The way go, way go, way go. Yeah, go. yeah. Like, that, that sort of track was like the only jazz-really-inspired track that was on the album. But it, I'm getting elements of that on this track here. Okay. In terms of the drum patterns. Do you so. feel like we might get the whole theme might be similar? Um, maybe. I'm just thinking maybe Mix experimented with this before, but then he's realized he's wanted to do a bit more with it. So I don't know if we're going to get more like this in the album, but nonetheless, this is a really fucking beautiful opener. I want to see more, man. I'm curious. Hmm. Well, the jazz is just like fucking gone. I don't care though. These, these keys are beautiful. <laughs> yeah, the fucking jazz. Throw it out the window. Fuck your jazz. Got this Mario Kart. Yeah, I was thinking that's what that Casio killed on. Yeah. Like my judgment and it's worth. I'm trying to be reflected. Don't mean to be overt with it. All this shit connected. No cursive is more coercive than simple calligraphy. I'll be speaking on the humble in the conversation. Who would think that I still cop the Jubilee? It was 15 hours. Barney's is that you were me. Barnes and Noble Savage Army, nigga, who you be? Producers Black Milk. Oh, Black Milk. I know Black Milk. Very dope. He was in Melbourne last year. Real fucking smooth again. Yeah, he's keeping this kind of subtle tone. It's not in your face. We're relaxed. If you notice as well, to when he's when he's speaking, his vocals aren't quite loud. Like they're quite even with the rest of the production. Whereas, like you got to hear it. Like you want. Mm, like it. whereas a lot of his previous work, as we said, like his voice is quite demanding. So you just yeah. you kind of kind of can just sit there. But here, like uh -huh. you said, you got to lean that bit further forward because there's so much in the background as well. But the production was really real catchy, really hypnotizing because it was pretty much the same synths and the same keys th that were throughout the whole track. Yeah, it didn't switch and up. You just, yeah, you just vibing. And I didn't care because it was such a beautiful melody and the track didn't go for too long where it was, it was, a, it was the right amount that I could just vibe to the Like if this was through. a five minute track, probably get bored, but it is the right amount of time. Mm. I mean, I think Mick is once again just, you know, there doesn't seem to be a concept here. It's just talking about the current state of affairs. Yeah, I was going to say, I haven't heard like his concept of water yet, so maybe maybe he's trying to challenge himself more with this album by not using that. Right. I mean, it's just, I'm looking through the lyrics here. He's on his wordplay, you know, <laughs> all this shit connected, no cursive, it's more cohesive than simple calligraphy, a whole, mm. a whole different mental with a stencil, and it was incidental. I mean, there's still lines to look into, but... Um, Even the way he started, it was like big this, big that. Like. Big this? Quick, fast, quick, fast. Yeah, that's right. Plus one, that's quick math. Yeah, exactly. Quick sand, sink <laughs> slow for some quick cash. See? That, those, that sort of word plays. Yeah. Fucking real... Uh, it's real still there. Fun. You like soft porn? What? Do you like soft porn? Give it to me with the clothes off. You could even take the gold off. Yeah, you knew it. Why do it feel like I take it? Ooh. Oh. Okay. Let's get all funky up in here, man. Yo. Okay, how you doing? I put that shit stay to school for me, party because somebody was brutally honest, pointed out social constructs. I foolishly honored, I booted the false concepts that diluted the water, was trying to be true to the nigga I was claiming to be. We look good. 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 See, this is very 50 cent ish, this bit right there. Oh, that? Oh, it's kind of because he's pitched I mean? it differently, too. That's very 50 cent ish. Very pickup. Produced by them people. Are we tackling some different beats here? Yeah. I feel like this whole album has kind of been new-ish territory in some ways. It's really odd because the way he's mixing his vocals with the beat is the same. 
but in terms of the style of the production is quite different on each track. Like first, a bit jazzy, second was a bit more minimalistic in keys, whereas here it's kind of like the bass drives the track a lot, like, and the, 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 the drum was a bit more faster paced, like the and the, the bass like really leads track that dun 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 like that's kind of like the, the, the real flavor of this track. The flavor of the month. Yeah. Flavor of the month. Flavor of the day. Um, but I love Mick on here. And even the part right, I said before, like there was the, in a, the bridge before the hook was very 50 cent. It's like, what the dun 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 Blah! Like that really just reminded me of something like would come off like Be The Massacre or even his first album, Gary Start Trying. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know if he intended that, but really, because even the base of the outline of this track is, that, that's very 50 cent-ish in a lot of his tracks. So I don't know if he was trying to go for that sound, but mix it with kind of like something else he was going for, but you nailed it, whatever you were going for, because I really enjoyed that track. Really cool, it really sort of gave me like, I was like sort of sneaking through like a city as like a superhero or a villain. <laughs> I know like the... Dun, dun, I love dun, how you do dun, that. You picture yourself yeah, in I scenarios. Just, I just felt like I was in like Gotham and I was just like sneaking around. Like, like I wasn't doing anything wrong, but like I thought like maybe I was. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, I see you. Um, for me, I enjoyed that. The, I need to listen to that again, man, because it, it's something that's, that is not right about that a couple of times during that. You know, I felt like his flow um, at times was almost skipped too fast over the beat, but then he brought it back and I enjoyed it more. You know, but th there was an element to that uh, that was just musically, sonically missing for me. I just can't put my finger on it yet. Fair, fair. I fucked with all of it, Mick. Oh, what's this? This is Grace and Mercy. Oh, this is hot. Wake up, thank you, God. Oh. I stay in the sun, in my skin like her. She just do everything well. Oh. Jackie joined a curse. See, I'm about to shit up. Monetize oh, this is dirty. Who produced this one? Ain't no bitch in me. Come and search me. Rio. Ned. I'm fly with my silhouette. Wake up, thank you, God. Yeah. Wake up, thank you, God. Oh. Wake up, thank you, God. Is that wake up in the morning and you just like you chuck on the sunnies? You got the blunts in your mouth, you get up, you like. That's the best beat on this whole album, to me. Alexander, I like that it was short and sweet because he kind of like had the the, the hook kind of like this was more of a, an anthem of a track. Anthem. Like woke up thanking God for the mercy. Like this. I don't feel like it was an anthem track. I got, I got anthem vibes for it because it was very hook driven, and to me hook driven tracks are more anthem like kind of like Drake Star from the bottom. Right, 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 it's an right. Um, Some clever yeah. lines on here, man. Have you seen Game of Thrones? Yeah. This is Game of Thrones where I see Cersei's, you know, people yeah. who are gonna betray you. Shame. Uh, we got the Eddie Murphy line playing all the roles, you know, Eddie Murphy because he plays all the roles and kind of mix asserting his his dominance over the hip hop industry, man. Does he play all the roles though? Hmm. He can sing, he can rap. I'm pretty sure he has hands to produce. Oh, shout out all the producers so far on this album. There's been four different main producers on the first four tracks. I'm pretty sure I've mixed work with them all before, but all of them have just like blended so well together, but have all been very unique. Very fucking hard to do. It's kind of hard that. to do, right? Very hard to do. I'm thinking maybe the person that mastered the overall album maybe had a hand in that because that helps in making things blend. Does Mick produce? I think he does put like hands in there. I'm pretty sure he helps out when he's doing it, but I'm not right, sure if cool. he like just produces things mainly for himself. I know, man. I ain't knowledge. Barcelona. To people butterfly once again, right? Straight up and down, I have the deep and crooked. They offer 20, I'm worth more. I told my niggas, look it. Praise God, my position is in make or break it. I'm no nigga with dreams of busting all over your girl. <laughs> Shakers are fucking Oh This is gorgeous oh. That's the first time he referenced the title That was straight fire man That to me is the best beat so far And not I think it's one of his most ambitious beats It is because if over. one thing goes wrong in that beat It fucks up everything else around it Because there's so many textures Layers. But like, just give me some of the sounds you heard. All right. 
Uh, I heard two types of drums, I think. Well, I heard like, I heard a lot of kicks. The kicks were very well structured. There was a bongo there. I heard a lot of shakers, like, like they were like minimalized and there'd be like lots of them going on. I heard a lot of keys. I heard guitar, I heard bass. Shit, man. And this time mm-hmm. I felt his lyricism, his vocals were all in my face. I didn't yeah. have to lean in. Yep. Yeah. I was thought, as soon as he started speaking, you're right. That it was a lot more, a lot more prominent. So now why did he decide to all of a sudden give us that? I think one of the reasons is because there is a lot more going on with the production. So you so want you want to make that too loud. Absolutely. Because then you'd be way too focused on that. And also maybe because what he's talking about, this track maybe has a bit more, I don't know. Either way, that was, I don't know if it was my favorite track so far, but definitely my favorite beat so far. Can I just point out one of these lines that super resonates yeah, yeah, with yeah, me? Yeah. One of my favorite lines he's probably ever said. Yeah. Fuck all this censorship, man. Niggas too sensitive. If your comfort ain't pivoting, you ain't listening right. Oh. I feel it's, it's a simple... But it's such a powerful statement because there's so many fluffy, too sensitive, too peace motherfuckers out here who need the world nerfed around them in order to maneuver through the world. I feel very passionate about God. this, and, I, and I'm glad Mick is Damn, speaking. Damn, you can it. see the passion, bro. You just want to start rapping yourself. <sighs> Man, I feel like that's gonna happen one day. It's just, but now, it matter. It of has time happened before. Before we just start doing shit. Man, we'll start dropping bars. You know how Mick doesn't really reference other rappers and stuff, right? He doesn't really reference the game Not too often. much in his music, and uh, but I think he does it subtly. He says these niggas running with scissors and heading straight for the plug, like people like you put metal in a in a PowerPoint plug, you know, it's, it's cuts It'll it out, you. right? And I feel like that's referencing the game, things that like Kanye, Drake, the feuds of Pusher and them, like all this all this fuckery that's going. It's like on. you've done so much to yourself. Like why are you going for the plug? Like why? Are you trying, yeah, career suicide. I feel like he's definitely referencing that stuff. Hey, feeling like that nigga these days. My skin is much clearer. My woman's skin is much clearer. Of course, I'm drinking my water. His voice is louder again. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yep. The jazz is back. The composition is complicated. I've contemplated so many perspectives. Accommodated my vices. Exonerated emotions. And then I'm coughing my cully coke. And I'm trapping my demons up. Oh shit! I had nothing, man. <laughs> nothing happened, bro. Man's not breathing. Mick brought back the motherfucking jazz. Talking all that, jazz. Talking all that, and with with the 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 vocal boost as well. Mm-hmm. Even though it was a simpler beat, he wanted us to hear what he was saying more prominently. I, I imagine. Yeah, it was kind of funny because at first I was like, because Mick sort of was rapping hard, but didn't really deviate the flow up too much at all. I was like thinking there, like, am I like a I'm enjoying Mick, but like, is, it, is this the first track where it's not like we're not getting something like a bit different or a bit more challenging from Mick? Mm. But then towards the end, there was like a few different switch ups and like he was going even harder. And at the end of it, I was just like, I'm vibing. Like, I, I like the track, but I do think that it's probably the first track in the album, which like, as I just stated, it's kind of hasn't, hasn't like challenged him as much as previous tracks. More of a neutral track yeah, still like still a decent track and one and one i could go back to and maybe see what i missed that i'm not seeing this first time around but from a first reaction point of view probably the first track that i haven't been as wowed by by the previous ones yeah and i didn't really pick up too much lyrically mm. it didn't really challenge me as a listener hey. uh. Uh. somebody put me on the leash i'm fucking wild like the ak because he came from cater with the green to this shit this that blue train Put your schemes to the test in real life, bet you need a vest, bet you need a vest. Niggas fighting crazy, but you're not a oh. dancing, no patches, all right. Don't get caught on your savior, glove up for the already challenged himself. Canceling plans at the last minute, you'll deny it, you admit it. That's tight, man. Different, but I'm caution with questioning. Shit, niggas that claim you bitching. Get straight to the money whenever your hands start itching. Know that if you ride me, you'll never be my go skipping. You gotta know that ain't me. Hey, beautiful. This is dope, great. Such good action. Gotta have it. Gotta have it. Please excuse the water bottle. I don't have it. I see. I know this thing is mad thirsty for the fame and glory. This is basic as a baby daddy. Oh, and more. Fuck the fake chains blinging. Auto tune singing. I'm a killer beast. Yeah. It suits it perfectly. The rulers 
Donald Trump is a piece of shit. I got 36 chambers, how I'm tipping the clip. Smoke and dip. No time for the games and dramatics. We blessed every morning with today's mathematics. Sheesh. Jace, that beat was crazy. That's the first uh, produced track by Kei Trinata. Mm -hmm. And you hear that line? I'm bucking wild like the AK because it came from K Trey. Now it makes me think if you buck him wild because of a K Trey beat, why don't we get a whole album of K Trinata beats? Because he's so wanted by so many other artists. If he's, if he, I reckon if he was to say, I'm going to do an album with Mick Jenkins, yeah. they'd have to do it in a week or less because K Trinata is wanted by so many artists. He's so busy. He's that sort after. Yeah, man. Everyone's side chaining their tracks. He says everyone's trying to copy his style because of how huge he is in the hip hop right now. Damn. And not just hip hop, even like other genres as well, man. And it, it, and he's versatile as fuck because he obviously got known for a lot of his synth style. But here, you don't even hear that. Well, actually, you do hear it, but it's just very different. You still hear diversity. Mm -hmm. I would still love to hear it, Mick and K. Mm -hmm. You know, give oh. it to me. Mick's verse was beautiful in here. Ghost Face was a great feature. He fitted that perfectly. That's why at first I thought it might have been bad, bad, not good with a produ producer because he produced uh, uh, one of Mick Jenkins' biggest singles and also he produced uh, one of Ghostface's album and it was very similar to the sort of sound, but K-Tray. Um, I wasn't huge on the hook though. Like, I don't mind if it's short, but the fact that it was, it was quite a long hook and even after Ghostface first, they ended the song with a hook again. I thought that maybe this track was a bit hook heavy for how beautiful the production and the, and the, the verses were. It is a long hook. I don't mind it. I mean, but we think about the highlight of the track would probably be the switch for production. You know, it kept it really engaged. You, I don't know how to describe it, but Kei Trinata, at the end of Mixed Verse, he switched up the, the yep. production. He kind of slowed it or tweaked it. What did he do? I don't know. Um, he, just, he just changed the synths and the, and the, the tempo of it. Yeah, he just changed a bit. But then he switched it back for Ghost. Exactly. Things. Yeah. I really like kept it engaging to me. Wait, it's called Ghost? Ghost. It's funny because the last track featured Ghostface. Yeah. Hmm. I supersede all the niggas who go with the grain. That's so true. Like every two or three lines I heard were just like, like the, these lines. This is when you need to pause the track and be like, hold yeah, on. Yeah, like just be like, holy shit, what this man say? I recognize the lines have so much weight to them, mm. and they're they're saying so much with their with in like one line. His but delivery, man. Absolutely, it's it's what makes it so powerful. But then it's like, wait, hold on, and then it goes to the next line. Well, I know it's powerful, and I'm trying to put the pieces together, but it's like, I don't have enough time. It's really weird. He delivers his lines like they're questions, but they're already answered. Then when he ends a bar, I'm just sitting there going, huh. Like it makes you think. Yeah, exactly. Like the way he delivers, it's like a question to me. Even if it's not a question, it just feels like it's a question. Right. And like he's already answered himself and he's just like, he finishes bar and he's just sitting there waiting. Just looking at you like, you'll get it. I'm waiting, you'll get yeah. it. You'll figure it out. Like if you don't, you're not even woke enough. If I edited this properly, then you would have, when you saw me up here, Doing these ones, like what the fuck is he saying? Like the oyster lines, the fuck. There's so many lines there mm. that made this track so impressive. Like he's saying so much, man. Uh, I, I love his wordplay. It was great. It's definitely one of, one of the tracks again where I was definitely drawn a lot more to what he was saying than the production. The production was still really nice. Uh, the jazzy environments back. We got a lot of those drums. We got a lot of those those keys, and uh, super light bass in the back too. But yeah, definitely more uh, poetry driven right here. It's where he comes from. And I fuck with him, man. I fuck with this track. Hair on flow. Two. And that goes back to the start. He said that same phrase, dot dot diddy. Like a jazz bar, you walk into a jazz bar, right? Is that the feeling you're getting? Uh, welcome, night. welcome, welcome to the club, y'all. Yeah. We're here now with your fool, Mick Jenkins. Give a round of applause, Mick yeah. Jenkins. Give a round of applause, Mick Jenkins, right now. How you doing? How you doing, ladies Yo, and gentlemen? Bars over there, Shannon's at the bar. Don't be shy, don't be shy. Don't shoot, fucking hook up, real good man. But right now, we're gonna be Jenkins coming right now. Let's fucking go. That's the fucking vibe I get. Hey, hey, it's good to meet y'all. <laughs> 
drink more. Nah, nah, I'm starting off real subtle. You know how it is. <laughs> These cold Chicago winners. That's a dope interlude. I love that. Yeah, tie, it ties in the concept a lot more as well because it dates back to, like I said, the very first track of what I was talking about. So we're tying in those jazz influences right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, Shaniqua. Yo, it's Shaniqua. You fucking Jafar. I bet it is for somebody. Ooh. Oh, God, don't do it to me, man. Shane, Shane, Shane. You don't really sound like this, are you? Ooh. Ooh. Oh, don't do me like this, Mick. Oh, okay, baby. But he can go hot as fuck, too. You know he can. It's probably the track that sounds the most like the healing component so far. You mean the beat or the yeah, flow? The beat. Very similar sort of like lyrically out of sight out of mind right like it kind of you wonder like if they pick up inspiration from random yeah, tracks like that's that that's what i'm thinking maybe you picked up inspiration from that track that beat was so smooth and the way that it builds up and comes through like mick just starts it off by using his raw vocals and, and it was delivered so well yeah i think mick definitely practiced a lot for this track he really got his, his vocals and his singing like on point for this track right here and beautiful switch up in the production as you stated like a lot more a lot more softer, but like really lush. Lush. And it just like, you just vibe in the whole way through, just like, oh. Uh. And you don't mind that the hook repeats because it's no, so buttery. Exactly. It's fucking good on here. It's, fuck man, this makes me feel good, man. I, I, I love, Mick, I know you're taking a, a, a kind of, you gotta be a bit courageous here, you know, to, to be singing like this. He doesn't do it that yeah, often. Because they're having people that have critiqued him on his singing, like, they'll mm. be like, I, I'd rather you rap more, but I, I quite enjoy mixing. I think he's got a really good voice. <laughs> Is this produced by them people? And Green Slime. Yeah, I was gonna say, it has that uh, more of a frustration sort of feel to it. This album's just vibe, it's energy, it's chill. 100% a vibe track. I closed my eyes for like 90% of that track. Damn. And when I opened my eyes, yours were closed too, so I'm pretty sure you were similar. Damn, I didn't even remember my eyes were closed, shit. I barely picked up shit, but uh, production, super fucking yeah. hypnotizing. Uh, then People, That's Green sick. Slime, very reminiscent of uh, or more the anxious and the frustration. And we've heard a few tracks that are very similar to that as well, so you can hear the, his last two mixtapes. Uh, inspiring a lot of the productional take of this album because I could have heard this track easily in one of those past two mixtapes and it fucking is so fucking you just get lost you just get fucking lost in it yeah man he's not trying to do too much here I wasn't huge on the hook though like put up on a demo like, I thought I thought the hook wasn't needed I thought maybe you could just keep it as verses and the and the ending bridge but besides that it's fucking dope I think it's been my only few problems with these albums is some of the hooks have either been a little too long, a little too simple. And I think Mick has struggled with that with a few, with a lot, lot of his stuff in the past, but... Past? 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 I'm fucking know, man. Past? Shut the fuck up. Fucking, fucking stab your liver. Consensual seduction. <laughs> okay. I, I'm not... Consensual. This is the new age. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got intentions 
just beyond what you mentioned, what you want from me. I could see the little intonations and like invitations. I need to speak in case I'm tweaking and just seeing distortions. My breath stopped to short and I caution my core and your instruction important. Just say it out loud. We can do the wait if you can't more than whisper. This is this is obviously how we this is how I'm making us feel, man. It's, it's kind of it's not because it's boring. No, it's not because it's boring at all. It's just because of that's just the overall tone. Like it's just a lot more chill and soothing. Like and I'm close. I can't help but close my eyes and try and pay attention. And then when the feature came in, she was did a really beautiful job. She perked us both up. We were both mm -hmm. like, oh, bit of bit of bit of beauty. Like legit. I feel like I could have a ten minute nap right now. And that's like I said, it's Ooh, not from weird. boredom. It's just from what the music's making us feel. It's just making me feel really calm, really soothing. And just really like really in like a nice fuzzy warm place right now and that's quite different from the healing component because we were stank facing that whole album mm -hmm. when this one we're like oh, chilling trying to stack these millions man it's like mix just like cuddling me and he's like kissing the tip of my knob and being like it's okay baby everything gonna be okay i think this is when mick clicks off the video and gets oh, a man. Button. he ain't opposed to giving a little knob little knob tap uh, maybe man i'm not judging the second time he referenced pieces of a man, and I, I, I imagine yeah, that... It's a piece of a person. Right, so referencing pieces of a man. So I imagine that Mick is not trying to be too obvious with this concept. He's like, I'm going to let the listener put the pieces of the theme and album together themselves. Which is quite different to his past concepts with water, where it was quite uh, cookie cutter what he was going for. Cookie cutter or more obvious? What are you trying to say? That's what cookie cutter is. I'm going to leave that one. <laughs> I'm going to just make a U-turn out of here. What do we got? We got a U-turn. Yo, it's the U-turn. I've been going wild. I've been That's dropping That's so weird, man. We feel similar vibe. This. Yeah, man. Like, we both just slowly fucking... <laughs> oh, you broke me, don't mate. Oh, shit. That's what I do. I break fucking knobs. Very hook heavy once again. But with that being said, you know, that second verse really brought this uh, more engaging element to it. We picked up his flow and his verse and he brought you in back to the song. All right, next track, Understood. What well, I'm gonna speak about? Well, fucking, you ain't speaking, bro. I make you dope, bro. You make good music. <laughs> well, that's why we're the best reviewers in the country, man. <laughs> Oh. Look, it's just like a SpongeBob SquarePants under the sea bait. Shit, about give me about this. Deep conversations by language, which one you speak? All the niggas play by legal like who they speak. Try to talk about niggas on the tip of their tongue. You know the feeling when the words just outside your feature. We're from selecting the lectures, selecting the coins to rejecting investments to connecting with hedges and stress and acceptance. So fuck it, I write on my left, I'm finessing this joke on my right. Fucking vibe, bro. 
And the video was really like family orientated, it seemed. I think Mick is trying to symbolize his the content of his lyricism through just a regular uh, African American family. Yeah, like the the father and son seem to be like having a, just having a barbecue, just, just having a good catch up. Then there was a. Uh, the son as well, and also just like just boxing. It seemed like the brother was there too. Just like, just seemed like a family that didn't really have a lot, but they had enough to be content and happy with themselves. Right. And on the flip side, Mick is also splicing in there with his lyrics about the challenges of. I assume he's talking about how. Mm. Go ahead. I can't articulate it right now. It's all. It's all. It's all juicy, bro. Um, I love the production of this track. I assume that's Kate Trinata. I remember reading one of the, the singles was Kate Trinata yes, sir. produced. It is. And this is uh, very Kate Trinata-ish. Beautiful. Love it. Since a fucking... Make the fucking stank face every time I hear them. And Mick's just flowing all over this. Amazing storytelling. Uh, really dope video. I fuck with it. Featuring bad, 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 bad. Oh, good. Bad, bad. Bad, bad, bad. I knew he'd be on this album. They make magic with Nick. And it's cool. Started with jazz, ended with jazz. I like that, man. Nick looks like a jazz man. You know I came just to smoke. Don't blow no resi my way. Matter of fact, stay on my way. Contemporary got me ready to spend. Fuck it, my comments, my verses get crazy on paper. I write it with pen. Ain't no erasing mistakes. We just learn from it till we earn from it. Six figures and not one was a father. And one that had a nigga for fuck up your partner. That guitar is just, I love that. It's a real subtle way to, to end the, the album. It's super minimalist production. Yeah. Bass, sax, jingles, like little bells. Jingles, yeah, jingle, jingle bells. And then Mick is super relaxed. Yeah, he's just really just like... But but it makes sense. It's smoke, most smoking song, right? That's what it's called. Vibe with a... Yeah, classic. It's a smoking song, so it's like... It, it makes sense to the title of the track. And it's... I think it echoes the way this album has really felt. Very vibe, very relaxed. You know, a lot of people yeah. are going to resonate with this. I agree. Very, very different to his last album. I think he's done an amazing job... Straight up of just uh, really switching how he makes the listener feel on this one. Mm. I think there's still a lot of elements of, be it his last few projects, but this is definitely very different to them. He's definitely pulled together a lot of, a few different genres and meld them really good in here, but definitely jazz is the most prominent thing we hear on there, which he definitely experimented with in his last album on the uh, Drowning, with Bad Bad Not Good, surprisingly, yeah. who also does this track right there you here. Go. I honestly think they have an amazing chemistry and I'd love to see him and Bad Bad make a whole album. Same with Kate Trinata, fuck it, even them. Pretty yeah, much everyone you... Three. I think there's a big... Not only are you a really talented songwriter and rapper, Mick, but the producers that you work with and have great chemistry with, they're all fucking amazing. And the fact that they blend so well here in one album and if they could do all separate albums, like you are truly uh, blessed, my man, to have such wonderful producers to work with. Absolutely. And as a whole, man, I didn't... I enjoyed every single track of this album. Yeah. There's not a single track I didn't like. And I think it cohesively, uh, the sonically, it, it was melded very well. I'm just giving my final thoughts right now. I think your wordplay and rhyme schemes are still there and strong. Mick fans are still going to get what they want, but they're going to get a different flavor. And it's the first album we've heard from where he hasn't referenced water. Right. It's been this different... Yeah, because I, I remember watching interviews and stuff with him. He's like... Like, are you ever going to do something without water? And remember, remember when we talked to him at the concert, he was like, nah, like, water's, water's always going to be there because it's a big part of who Is I that am. what he said? I can't remember. I can't remember exactly what you said, but I remember you, you mentioning that water, like, truths and, like, love, it's like, it's always your message and it's always going to be there. So maybe it's still present in here, but you I have... did think, I think it was much more subtle. Mm. It wasn't as prominent. I think it's definitely, so I think you still, that message is always, it's what you live by and it's probably in here though, but I think it's smart that you've, Definitely challenge yourself a lot more by finding other ways to go about a message. And you notice there's still, there's a handful of powerful tracks on here that are really mm. big highlights for, for Mick fans. They're going to love it. And it could be, oh, you know... Barcelona especially. Yeah, they're so mature and sophisticated and, and subtly complex. Super impressive. So for me, I still get what I want as a selfish Mick fan. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, 
you know, put this shit on in the background. I'm a vibe to it. I don't know if it's a top 10 album. I don't think so based off this first listen, but it, it is a good album and it complements his discography well. I think so as well. I think that at the time of uh, his discography, this is just one of those ones which is definitely more for the hip hop heads. I think those that have enjoyed Waves and enjoyed the healing component might listen to this album and leave feeling a bit bored because they just don't understand this style Fair of music. Fair enough, you go back to his other music then. Exactly, whereas I'm into this album, this is the mix that I enjoy more. Um, I think I'm going to enjoy this a lot more than the healing component from a production standpoint because I enjoy that more. Yeah, that's your thing. That's your number one. What is that fair to say? That's the first yeah. thing you hear. It's your Production's the first thing I hear. One of your biggest priorities. 100%. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited to go back to this and see what I missed with what Mick was saying. Because I did pick up, a few, even even on Barcelona's second listen, I picked up so much more. Mm. It just goes to show the difference of how strongly I feel for production. Mm. Um, yeah, the, yeah I, I'm, all my thoughts. I'm the same Mick. I don't think there was a bad track on here. Uh, I did disagree and not feel a few of the hooks. But pff, besides that, man, and even even like... Like if people said to shorten this album, I don't think you need to shorten. I think it's a, a pretty decent length and you've done really well. I'm, I'm sorry I didn't catch the overall message and theme of Pieces of a Man. I didn't really pick a lot up about that. This was dope as fuck. I, I really, I'm really excited to go back to this and I think it's going to be good because I can put this on the background to a lot of minimal things, be it in the morning, uh, just reading, reading the news and like having a coffee. I feel like this is just a really good to put on when you're just thinking a lot because you can still pay attention because it's so well crafted in that re in regard. We reviewed pretty much all the mix music since the healing component so go check that out on our channel if not be we will continue to go check out Mick Jenkins man do yourself a favor. We, we jungle are. beats. Thank you. See ya.